What is up everybody? Today, I'm gonna to be showing you how to create this, and this is fully achieved with zero Java script. Look at that. E -e -e -e. What's up everybody, Gary Simon here. So very recently, Chrome released as a part of their experimental web features flag in Chrome Flags, the ability to create CSS animations that are tied to the scroll. And that is without any JavaScript whatsoever. So we can start playing around with this today, even though you can't really for production yet. All right, so I came across this really good tutorial that outlines a bunch of examples and how this all works. And so I'm just showing you one such use case right here. Um, and But I would definitely highly suggest checking this out because there's a lot of really cool things that you can do that I didn't really cover. Um, this is all purely uh, HTML and CSS, and there's a lot of other examples here. So definitely check out that demo. All right, so as always, make sure to subscribe if you haven't yet, and let's get started. Now, wait one second. You're about to watch me demonstrate a really cool front-end development feature of the future. Now, if you're not very good at front-end development, you should definitely check out the front-end developer career path at scrimba.com. They recently launched their front-end development career path, which is a collection of courses that cover HTML, CSS, JavaScript, React, and much, much more, as you see. It's over 75 hours of awesome content, there are hundreds of interactive coding challenges, and it's all geared towards helping you go from beginner to someone that's hireable as a front-end developer. So check out the first link in the description below to get 50% off. All right, first things first, we're gonna get started with the HTML as normal. I just have a normal index.html. Um, quick tip, M abbreviation, explanation point, enter gives you pretty much what I have with exception to the link rail right here to the CSS main.css file. That's in a CSS folder inside, and I have a main.sass file, so you're gonna need the SAS, uh, live SAS compiler extension um, running there, it's currently watching it. And then also right click, open with live server, you're gonna need the live server. Those two are right here, live server and live SAS compiler. Um, and yeah, let's go ahead and get started. So. We're just gonna have an initial sh an initial section up top and we're gonna put 100 viewport height on that just so that we have you know a, a good area to scroll on top of and beneath the section. You can still do this though, like on the initial, I guess you could say above the fold, uh, but I'm just choosing to put it in the center um, you know, between these two sections that we're gonna have. So P, scroll down. Under ideal circumstances, you'd put some sort of scroll down indicator, loading graphic or whatever. Um, I'm gonna put a, a class of container right here, and then we're gonna have a div class of inner, and the reason I'm doing that is because the container is gonna be a display grid, and I'm gonna be able to use the uh, place items center uh, property, and so we only wanna have one element in, directly inside of container. And then this is where all of our other stuff goes, um, like, um, let's see, an unprecedented, unprecedented vision. I don't mean to where I came up with that. It's some, some stupid snazzy co ad copy-ish headline. Um, and then we're gonna have a coming to a YouTube near you, whatever. All right, and then we're gonna have a, um, I should have just used an image tag, but initially when I created this HTML, I, I decided I wasn't gonna do that route, but then I thought of that funny image and I just did CSS after as a background image. Um, so I'm just gonna stick with that frame box. That's it. And then finally, we're gonna have just an empty section underneath as well for extra scroll abilities. And that's it for the HTML. So if we go to our, this is what it looks like, our browser right here. Very ugly, as always. So um, we're gonna just quickly paste in this part. Um, that's just gonna give us a dark you know, blue background, white text default the margin to zero, or reset it rather, and that's it. So enter, let's just do like a width of 60%. This really, I'm not considering this responsive because this is such a quick demo. Um, we're gonna have our section here. Like I said, uh, we're gonna do a display, display grid on this section as well, just to center vertically and horizontally that scroll down text. Um, so place items, center, this is what that does. Oh. Wait, well, hold on a second. We still have some other properties. 
Uh, height, 100, viewport height. There we go. That's why that wasn't working. There we go. Scroll down. And then also, let's just do some snazzy letter spacing here at like 1M font size, 1.2M, if I could type. And that's it for the section right there. All right. Uh, no, no, it's not. Text transform, uppercase. It just looks so much better when you have that extended letter spacing, just uppercase everything. <laughs> there we go. Okay. So next up, we're gonna have our container. So our container is going to have a text, uh, a line of center, because currently it's not. A height of 100 viewport height as well. Display is gonna be grid, place, items, center. Uh, we're also gonna have a margin of zero on the top and bottom, but two EM on the left and right. Let's see what we have so far, okay. And then uh, we'll do a, perspective at 1000 pixels and a perspective origin at 50 and 50%. This is gonna help our or set up our perspective-based 3D transform uh, on the parent container. Now, we're also gonna have our frame box inside of it, and that's going to have a width of 100%, height of about 700 pixels, and then we're gonna do our background URL and coders.jpg. By the way, DevEd made this uh, <laughs> this image and it was, it was months back. All right, and then just a couple more properties. We'll have background size is cover. Also border radius at 0.5 M units. Position will be relative and margin top will be 4 M units. Actually, I don't know why I have position relative there. Yeah, because I was gonna do some sort of uh, before and after selector, but I decided not to do that. All right, there it is. All right, and then finally, the very last thing before we get into the meat and bones is font size, uh, 3M units. We want a nice big old beefy header. But there we go. Okay, so what we wanna do now is we're going to wrap in um, a little thing that it's going to determine if the browser supports this feature or not. All right. And this is what it is. So it's at supports animation timeline works. All right. So it means whatever's if it does, it's going to run in here. All right. Um, also, by the way, uh, for Google Chrome, you're going to need to enable the specific Chrome flag for this to work. Um, I'm going to pause and get that real quick just to show you. And here it is. So you type in your Chrome uh, URL Chrome colon slash slash flags and make sure that experimental web platform features is enabled. All right. All right. Great. Then it will work for your browser. All right. So what we want to do now is we're going to reference our frame box once again, but we're going to attach to it some of the CSS properties and values that will make this work. So first we're going to give it a normal animation. So we're going to say one second linear forwards and we're gonna call this flip hyphen card. Uh, we're just gonna call that a card, like photograph of us flipping. All right, so this looks pretty normal at this point, uh, but this is where it starts to get a little bit different. Animation timeline. And then we're gonna say flip hyphen timeline. All right, so this is so new, of course, um, and, and being that it's it's still experimental, uh, you know, Visual Studio Code doesn't recognize what the hell's going on. Um, and then we're gonna do also uh, a default transform on this. And we're going to say rotate X negative 120 degrees. All right, so if we save this now, we're gonna see this has uh, been flipped up <laughs> upside down and everything. Uh, but we can see that this at supports is working here. Um, now we're also go. I'm going to add as well um, a couple other properties that aren't specific to the purpose of this video, but transform style, preserve 3D, and backface visibility hidden. Uh, that's just one of those things where I, if there's like flicker, and I still wasn't able to get rid of all the flicker, it can help fix those things. That's the best way I can describe it. Um, then what we're going to do is we're going to define this right here. This animation timeline's bound to this custom value. You can name this whatever you want, flip timeline. 
So what we'll do is at scroll timeline, flip timeline, and we'll just say time hyphen range, another property you've never seen in your life, one second. Now it's not a second in terms of time on a clock, which the article that I showed at the beginning of this video really explains in much better terms. It's really just assigning to it a value of some sort. And you could play with this values in order to affect the speed of the animations that occur basically and when they occur. Um, so we're just setting it to one essentially. Then we're gonna create our regular keyframes animation. We call it flip card right here. So we're gonna do flip card and then we specify opacity. Let's just do opacity at first. Oh, oops, forgot my other stuff. From opacity zero and then two, two poppins. Uh, two is going to be opacity one. All right, so let's save this. Oh, and guess what? It is completely not working at all. All right, well, let's think about this. Why didn't it work? All right, so keyframes, uh, we got scroll timeline, flip timeline, animation timeline is flip timeline as well, flip card, opacity from two, got to figure out why this is not working. Um, <laughs> oh, it's because back face visibility uh, is hidden. Let's take that off real quick. There it goes. Can't really tell too much just because we're starting the progress up here at zero and then we're coming down to 50% right here, which is where the opacity is about right there. And then down here all the way 100% is off like you can't even see it. So one of the things that we can do to speed this up is to increase this value like at 1.7 or so or even something higher. So now we can see we're almost at full opacity and you can really understand how this is, you can envision, envision it a little bit better if we use a different property. So let's go ahead and do that rotate. So currently it's rotated X at negative 120. So we'll just take this and then we'll just go to zero. And watch this. Now it does do this little flicker right before it starts to change. And I wasn't sure why that is. I'm not an expert on like 3D perspective transforms and CSS. So if you guys have a fix, let me know. But yeah, that is basically it. And if you really increase this value like to something much higher, you'll see that the animation occur occurs like quickly and gets done. Now in this context, it doesn't really make sense because we can barely see it. So like 1.7, based on our current setup, where everything is in terms of scrolling, makes more sense. Now there's other things you can do with this as well, like for instance, if you had another, uh, like a scroll area, where you have like a div for instance, and you have overflow X or, or a horizontal scroll like overflow Y or whatever, and you have scroll bars inside of your app, you can specify your scroll um, activated animations like this by uh, using a source attribute, which is described in that really well put together uh, tutorial that I mentioned at the beginning of the video. But I don't wanna spend too much time on this just because it's not something you can use right now, but it's just a real quick look at you know the future of CSS uh, and the fact that we're not gonna use or need JavaScript for a lot of our animations. All right, so let me know what you think in the comments. Is this something you're really looking forward to? I know it's like a no brainer. It's a stupid question. Of course it is. Um, but yeah, as always, if you enjoyed this, make sure to subscribe and I'll see you very soon. Goodbye.